Good morning readers. I, Harish Budhu, warmly welcome you to my channel. Learn as much as possible from my handwritten articles. Opinion Paper. This 14th of July 2020. Question arises, why did I forgive the same jug north? Simple answer, country first. Hellish prison life at Anrud Jug North's police and central Bobasin prisons. Sleep deprivation and breaking morale were their favored weapons. There was an attempt to even poison my food. 1. Feel welcome to this 14th of July 2020 opinion paper. It will throw some new light on two of the current issues, affecting us. Our duty is just to lay the foundations. But it will be for you to analyze them, and then reach your own decisions. Okay? Take care. Have a great evening. And share the article with your friends if you are satisfied. Thanks a lot. Blessed be the one who saves others. 2. Our young readers and student friends matter. A. First, yesterday's article. We had highlighted 32 English expressions or phrases for you all. Also, we had consulted our most favored dictionaries 36 times. We record all the details in our diary the very next morning. That exercise helps to strengthen the mind. Try it, and discover its wonders after hardly one month. My diary is a real treasure trove of information. Believe you me. B. A good daily sleep keeps your body strong and your mind healthy. Refer to the article of yesterday, pages 3 and 4. You can judge a person's personality by his daily sleeping pattern. You should have at least 8 hours good sleep every day. Adults should have a minimum of 6 hours. You give a good rest to all your muscles and cells, when you sleep well. Most people with mental problems do not sleep well. The mind should be well cared. 3. Sleep deprivation in prisons. A. And that is the reason why oppressors do not allow their victims to live plus to sleep well. Cruel police officers deprive their suspects of sleep, they create all sorts of problems to prevent them from being comfortable, happy and healthy. Sleep deprivation results in mental disorders, according to doctors. We will provide three glaring examples from our own experiences of prison life. 1. First example, in January 1989. We held a press conference in the second week of January 1989. In view of widespread Mauritian passports racket, we asked for a commission of inquiry. Few days later, an army of police officers, under the leadership of Regis Barb, superintendent, arrested me. I was imprisoned at Line Barracks Police. The cell was near an overflowing latrine, it was infested with mosquitoes, bugs, big cockroaches, and rats. And the overflowing latrine's horrible and pungent smell was overwhelming and sickening. Nauseating. Not only that. The police officers regularly came to check, all throughout the night. It was only when I complained to the court that I was transferred to another cell. But police officers disturbed my sleep several times during the night. Later, Superintendent Regis Barb apologized and confided that he was often called at the Prime Minister's office. But it was too little, too late. On passant, the refreshing memories of two line barracks police officials now come flooding back. They were parfait and sukia. They were real gentlemen, the best of their kind. 2. Second example, December 1992. It was a political case. I was betrayed by my own lawyer, who later became that of Anne Rude Jug North and Sun Trust. I was condemned to six weeks in prison, for scandalizing the court or pay a fine of 5,000 rupees. I went to prison. It was hellish. The Bobas and prison officials scared the hell out of me. I was kept in solitary confinement, that is, I was not allowed to see or speak to anybody, except the prison officers. I was daily locked up in a small cell at 4 in the afternoon, and released the next morning at 6 in the morning. I was not authorized to have any pen, book, diary newspaper, handkerchief, etc. My spectacles, too, were confiscated. But even worse now, 
The officers searched me thoroughly and the cell too high and low, eight times every day, four times at night. Sleep deprivation was their weapon. Loss of morale was another. The very next day, I went on hunger strike. It lasted for some six days. Hold your breath now, all the bowls of food, three multiplied by six, were stacked up in my small cell. Just imagine the overpowering sour smell of stale foods and the horrible stench of the rot. Which all led to a high fever and other serious health complications. It was only then that Dr. Narain visited me. He was shocked. He ordered to remove all the 18 rotting food bowls. I was transferred to the prison hospital. I was allowed to keep books, pens, papers, spectacles, etc. in my cell. That was prison life under Anrud Jugnorth and his minister, Dr. Amjatun. On passant, there was an attempt to even poison my food. Ask Ramjatun who has ordered him. Oh, the flashbacks are extremely painful. 3. Third example, January 1993. I was arrested along with four young students by Cura Pipe Police, for sticking posters. I was imprisoned at Vagoa's police, the cell was near a very dirty and smelly toilet, and was infected with mosquitoes and bugs. Again, their aim was to deprive me of sleep. B. And yet, and yet, some of my relatives and close friends cannot understand why I had forgiven the self-same and rude jug north in year 1982, 1983, 1987, 1995, 2000, 2014 and 2019. Short answer, country's interests first. Keep reading, keep learning. Like and subscribe for more thrilling articles. Thank you for watching.